Hello, hello. Right, we're back. ASP level 100, guys. Going to do a video on it. Now, I did a video a while back, but I didn't I didn't talk about things that I wanted to talk about. I didn't really... Um, I felt like I explained stuff and it sounded a bit bad. So I'm going to revisit it and try and make a better video, basically. So what is ASP 100, for those who don't know? Right, ASP 100 is a battle rank 100 uh, perk or perks that you get. So... At level 100, you get one token to add to ASP 100. You get you get a token and a title. Now, let me have a look. So if you go to my character, you've got uh, ASP Operative. Now, that's the, the title that you get. You also get um, a one token. So that token can be spent on anything you want. Now... You can reset your token, so yeah, it's not normal buyer. So you can reset your token. So don't you know if you spend it on something bad, you could always save up five K certs and reset it. But I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So straight away off the bat, you won't be able to find ASP by going into your character screen. It's not in your character screen. No matter what class you pick, it's not going to be there. You need to click options. Then you click my character and you go into advanced specialist program. With that said, I'll just tell you this. If you go into the banner section, you go down, you've got ASP refund token. Pardon me. You can refund it for 5k. That's 5k certs and not daybreak. Okay, just to put that out. And you can spend daybreak if you wanted. But personally, I just save up certs. Now also i forgot to mention this in the last video but it cost you ten thousand certs to buy asp 100. now you can get it for free if you buy a membership now in my video in my previous video that i did about membership and why i bought it i talked about basically um, buying it and realizing that you get asp for free now i did know this that was one of the reasons why I bought it. I just forgot about it, to be honest. And when I reached level 100, I had 10K certs saved. And then I realized, hang on a minute, I get it for free anyway. So just throwing that out there. So membership means that you don't have to pay 10K certs. Now, I had like 9K certs to burn after I got ASP because I forgot about it and I had like 9.5K. So I'm gonna go into ASP I'm going to talk about each ASP perk. I'm just going to say this straight off the bat. I play a lot of engineer. So a lot of my ASP perks are aimed at engineer. Okay. They're not aimed at heavy assault, really. They're not aimed at any other class. Play a lot of engineer. So bear that in mind. So stuff that you might pick might be more towards light assault, more towards the medic, more towards whatever. So I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Just so you know. But yeah. So let's go and have a look. So I'll tell you first off what I picked and then I will start from the bottom and work my way up. So shotgun secondary, EMP grenade access, assault rifle access, LMG access, heavy weapon secondary. So um, that's what I did, that's what I picked. Now obviously they're all aimed around the engineer. I think one of them's aimed at a heavy, um, heavy assault, heavy weapon, you know, Secondary is really good. I'll talk about that in detail later. But first, I'm going to go and talk about each one. So this is my, based on my own personal opinion. Obviously, if you play a certain class more, you might pick it more. Um, or you might find it useful. So reserve hard light barrier access. Um, do I use it? No, I don't use it. Is it useful? Right. So the reason why you might pick this is for what's called point holding. If you're a point hold outfit, you pick this. Um, it, it would be useful. Now, hard light barrier access, um, you would be able to put it in a doorway and defend that doorway. Now, you're taking away the medic ability to heal yourself, so you would need a way to heal yourself. But generally, as a point hold outfit or point hold um, squad, you would have medics to medic you. So that's what you would use it for. 
so yeah it's up to you really i wouldn't i don't use it because i play a lot of solo what i call solo uh heavy where i use medic kits to medic myself so universal decoy grenade this is like the complete most utterly useless thing you, you don't have people on a point and then you chuck a decoy grenade down and they all go over there and check it out and then you sneak on point and take the point <laughs> it just doesn't happen you know you don't have guards at a at a gate and you chuck a decoy grenade down and they go and check it out and then you you stab them in the back of the net you know like in the movies um, decoy grenades are pretty useless i mean they know you're there anyway you're chucking a decoy grenade down they're probably not even going to go and check it out anyway because they uh, i don't know it's just a waste of time what they should do really is have the decoy grenade so that you can chuck it while you're invisible like on a i don't know on a, on a class maybe or something i mean yeah you just don't use it um i, I don't find it useful so yeah uh, even though the universal decoy grenades I, I still wouldn't find them useful i mean i don't even use them on the class they're meant to be on I don't even use them on infiltrators, so yeah. Anyway, so these discounts, um, that now I'm just going to talk about each discount. I'm going to talk about why I don't have them. So Liberator and Galaxy for heavy air, you get ESF and Valkyrie twenty percent. You get Lightning and Main Battle Tank twenty percent on combat armor. Ground transport is Ant and Sunderer by twenty percent. Heavy air discount reduces the amount of cost of Liberator and Galaxy. Um, I've already talked about that, but um, yeah, it's called heavy air discount. Light ground discount, flash 50% um, and harass for 20%. Now these, the reason why I don't have them, if you go into outfit, you look at armory, you go right down into the armory. Now they have the ability to put discounts on stuff. So you get a mobile armor discount, support armor discount, light aircraft discount. Now, if you're in a large outfit and you have leadership or your, um, you have the ability to pull. So if you have the ability to put a discount down on a base, um, really it just saves you getting, basically, you know, it saves you getting ASP. So. So here you've got heavy air, light, ground, karma. You've got all these. Don't use them based on the fact that I, you know, I'm in an outfit that I'm able to put down discounts. And they only cost 10 green. And if you're in quite a large outfit, you get a lot of green back. You get a lot of green resource. So you're able to carry on building, which is pretty good. So yeah. So just throwing that out there. Now, if you was running solo and you didn't have an outfit, I would recommend getting these. I mean, Harasser and Flash, 50%. I mean, Harasser's pretty good, 20%. And um, the Ant is really useful as a solo vehicle, I would say. So getting a, a discount on that is nice. Um, so yeah. So Sidearm Prime is moving on. I don't use this. Now, you might use it if you was going for a directive. But then again, if you was going for a directive, you probably ASP 100 and have um, tokens to burn, really. I mean, I've reset my tokens around about seven or eight times because I'm always changing my tokens, trying to find the best possible way to use all my tokens. At first, I did have heavy air discounts and light air discounts, but that was before they really put resources in outfits. You wasn't able to put a discount down on a base. But now you can. It makes it a lot easier and it saves you from buying these. I always feel. That's what um, happened anyway. That's what I ended up getting rid of these. So sidearm primary. Um, I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't really want to use a primary weapon as my sidearm. Maybe if you're an infiltrator you might want to use it. But again, you know, it's, it's down to the individual person and how they play the game or how they want to play the game. So yeah, moving on, you've got anti-vehicle access. Now, this is good for an engineer. Now, the problem why I don't use it or don't have it. Now, if you go to my character, um, sorry, not my character. If you go into um, engineer, now engineer can only have four slots. 
One of the slots is bugged because I can't have black camo on it because I have it put to my Sunday. But with that said, um, it only has four slots. Now, I struggle to have everything on each slot. So most of the time I've got like bouncing bets and I run with them. But say I want to get tank mines, I have to go up to the terminal, I have to change my tank mines to everything. And it's just a complete mess. A, a bad example of this, a, a stupid example of this is like here, you've got medical kit, right? If I change, now you can look, you could see where I am. I've gone to the last loadout. If I click something like tank mines, it goes back to my second loadout. So it keeps resetting. So you have to reset every time shield capacitor and then it goes back and then you go back and you put black armor and then it goes back and you have to keep resetting now you could obviously you have to select the loadout for it to stay but it's just a pain in the ass keep changing everything around it just it just gets me so having grenades anti-vehicle grenades i just never used i just never really used them so let's just um go back into it so is under our control. Great nice. Work. Hey, we won. NC won. So yeah, so here having anti-vehicle grenade is really useful as a max, like you're fighting maxes. Really good against maxes. But do I did I use them? No. Now I would always have to switch to them, but I would always forget they're there and I just never used them. So with that said, I just don't use them. Um so yeah, I probably will save up and get them again. Because a lot more maxes are being pulled. Um, but yeah, I mean, they are useful. I just forgot they were there. And I, most of the time I carry EMP grenade. I EMP grenade the point and then go in and shoot whoever's on the point. I don't really use anti-vehicle grenades that much. And because we don't have that many loadout slots, I don't have enough loadout slots to make an anti-vehicle, an anti-max, uh, whatever. So, yeah. So, yeah, they are good. I just don't use them. I wish we had more loadout slots and I would use them more. So SMG circuitry. Now this, if you're a light assault main, this is your go-to. This is primary because um, this is a good primary to have. Because you, well, sorry, this, this is a good secondary to have, sorry. Because your primary can be a shotgun and you can have an SMG secondary. So it's a good combination. As a light assault, you, you poke a thorn in the enemy. You're there, you're not there, you're there, you're not there because you're zooming away into the on the roof and then you're coming back down, you're shotgunning someone, then you're switching to light so you're switching to secondary SMG, you're shooting everybody at long range. It's a really good thing to have, and I would recommend it. So universal smoke grenades. Um, universal smoke grenades I do not use. Would I would I use them? Not really. Chucking smoke down on the PS4 actually lags me. It lags me to the point I can't see what I'm doing. There was one time when we had this guy who was in our squad and we were one base away from winning the continent alert. And he come along and starts chucking smoke down on the point with smoke grenades. Don't ask me why he just did. He blocked all our vision. Now this guy is like nearly level 100. He chucks down smoke all over the point. We can't see what we're doing. An enemy max runs through the smoke and kills all of us on 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 the point because we can't see where the max is. And he end up they end up winning or taking the the point back with literally like ten seconds left. We were like we were five seconds away from taking it. They took it back, rushed the point because we couldn't see because of smoke, and we lost the continent. That's how much I hate smoke. Smoke is just the most useless thing. Now, you can obviously see through smoke if you have night vision optics or something. But we didn't have that at the time. I suppose you could use smoke and night vision optics. But again, I don't use it, so yeah. Would I buy it? No. Would I recommend you guys buying it? Not really. You've got under barrel grenade launchers that you can use smoke, so I'd use them instead and save your ASP. There's better ASP tokens out there. So sticky grenade access. Is this any good? Yes, I would say it's good. Any sticky grenade, you can have, if you can have sticky grenades on other classes, it would be really strong. Sticky grenade is good because if you sticky grenade someone, say, when they're running in a spawn room, 
they run in a spawn room and they blow they can blow up the whole spawn room well not quite but if people are standing just in the spawn room and they run towards them they will kill them so you can get one or two kills you can get probably i mean i think there was a guy i was playing with once who stuck who stuck a sticky grenade to somebody at a terminal and um they ended up running into a bunch of enemies and getting and, and he got a bunch of kills from it so yeah they are really good sticky grenades on an engineer are really good as well i would recommend them so yeah so concussion grenade access for a medic would you use this no you don't use concussion grenades the best thing you can use as a medic is revive grenades always revive grenades healing grenades not so much but revive grenades definitely 100 percent so concussion grenade access don't buy it waste of time you need to start using revive grenades carbine access on a on a medic now carbine access is really strong now let's have a look at carbines so carbines for example we've got carbines here you've got the bandit really strong razor gd23 also really strong gd7f got good t t time to kill it's probably one of the best time to kill weapons in the game it's up there with canis and the rest of it i'd say so yeah you've got the acx11 really strong gun if you can hit headshots with this your quids in at, at short range af19 mercenary is a is a good gun bandit has good hip fire i mean really you've got some good carbines now i don't know about the other classes i don't know about the other classes i don't know about the other factions sorry i don't know what they are like but um definitely i would get if you play a lot of medic i would get the carbine access i mean a gd7f on a medic is is good it's really good so yeah i'd recommend that uh carbine access really strong nc has some good carbines i mean i play a lot of engineer and i don't use my carbines as much as i should i should use them more really but i tend to use a lot of lmg uh, but i'll talk about that in a sec anyway so battle rifle secondary now battle rifle secondary is this let me just go in, into it so battle rifle so that's a battle rifle now with the warden say you pick the warden you can have a smoke launcher underneath or a grenade launcher so um as a medic having a battle rifle secondary instead of a pistol can be really strong now a lot of pc players they used to carry a battle rifle around with smoke as a secondary and they would pull the battle rifle out they would switch to smoke and they would chuck smoke down on the point and they would have night vision optics so they're able to see then they would switch to their primary weapon which would be uh, probably the GD, G, GR22 or something along them lines. And they would be able to kill people on point. Um, there was a guy talking about it on PC once while I was watching a stream. That's really what I've seen people use it for. Obviously a battle rifle, you could shoot people at long range, which is also useful. So if you play a lot of medic, really good. Carbine access, battle rifle secondary is really good. I wouldn't get concussion grenades, but these two I would look at getting so moving on we've got flash grenade access for the heavy assault i feel like flash grenades are good people don't use them as much as they should now obviously you've got an implant that can so let me just show you real quick that can obviously nullify the effects so let's just have a look quick oculus shield here you go so it reduces the duration and effectiveness of flash, concussion, and EMP grenades used against you. Reduces the duration, effectiveness of concussion, flash, and EMP grenades used against you by 30%. And using a medic, medical or restoration kit provides immunity to these effects for the next five seconds, but does not clear the effects. So yeah. So obviously you've got stuff to counteract that. Um, but I, I feel like people don't use the um, flash grenade as much as they should, really. Flash grenades are really good for bombarding a point. People don't use them as much as they should. So, yeah, I would recommend getting this if you play a lot of heavy. Really strong. Concussion grenade access for light assault. I would not get it. I would stick with the flash grenade. 
I mean, concussion grenade's not useless. It is useful. I mean, a heavy has it, and I do use it on a heavy. But using an ASP token, I'm not too sure. I mean, if you play a lot of light assault, you could go down that route. But personally, I just use flash grenades. I bombard the point with flash grenades instead of concussion grenades. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's down to the individual again, but yeah. So, flash grenade access on an infiltrator. Well, uh, I mean, it's down to the individual again, but I, I see, as an infiltrator, we, I see a lot of people would use EMP grenade, really. I've never seen anybody use a flash grenade as an infiltrator. I've spoke to people who may an infiltrator, and they all say the same thing, that EMP is really useful. You could chuck an EMP grenade down on point, and it takes down people's shields, so you're able to get a couple of kills. You know, go on the point and shoot people when their shields are down, if you're really accurate. So yeah, so would I use flash grenade access? No, not really. I mean, you could use it to bombard a point before you go in. You could see where the enemy is and you could bombard a point with flash grenades, but really I wouldn't use it. I'd save your ASP token. Now these are what I personally went for and I'll tell you why I went for them. Now I've reset my ASP hundreds of times, but I'm just gonna talk about uh, each one and why I picked it, so. Heavy Weapon Secondary. Now, Heavy Weapon Secondary, if you go into Heavy Assault, I've got my Jackhammer as a secondary weapon. Now, you could use the Thumper or the Jackhammer. I chose the Jackhammer because the Jackhammer is pretty good at clearing a point. Now, I'm not accurate with it by any means. I actually suck really bad at shooting with it. I'm not used to it at all. And the only reason I started using it as a secondary was because I need to get my directive done for my um, heavy but I also just use it for using it it's there I don't feel the need to not use it sometimes I'll pull it out and try and get a few kills with it um, but generally I went for it because it seemed like the obvious choice out of all the ASPs I had different ASP weapons like um, um, I wanted uh, anti-vehicle grenade access but instead I swapped it out and got heavy assault weapon secretary and i do use it quite a lot i use it more than i would with the vehicle grenades so yeah it's good as a secondary weapon good to have a secondary weapon most people 99 percent of players like that main heavy assault would take a pistol a pistol would make more sense but for me i don't play that much heavy so to have a heavy assault weapon secondary and provide support to my team who's mostly getting the kills, is useful to me. I always feel like pulling out a thumper or pulling out a shotgun and trying to wound the enemy while the friendlies get kills is good. I don't always get the kills with a shotgun because I'm my aiming is terrible, but yeah, that's why I picked it. So LMG access. Now, there's things to bear in mind when you're picking the LMG as an access for ASP. Don't fall into the trap of buying it because you've seen it you've seen people use lmg engineer with me you can't 1v1 somebody very well with asp lmg people get into this trap of like mainly new players of getting asp and saying i'm going to get the lmg for the air, for the engineer and i'm going to be this guy that goes around killing everybody because you're like oh look at this damage this is a this is a gore saw, you know. Um, so if you go to LMG, click gore saw. It does 200 damage at close range. So you're like the gun I'm using only does 143 damage at close range, but this this gun this gun does 200. So I'm going to go around killing everybody. Now you, at the end of the day, you're an engineer. You don't have overshield. You're not a heavy assault. I have to tell you this because there's been a lot of confusion over the years. People say, oh, I've got SP you know, LMG for my engineer. Now I can go around killing stuff finally. It doesn't work like that. Okay, you're still an engineer at the end of the day. You're still gonna die a ton. Having something like this is more of a gimmick than it, that, well, it's more of a gimmick on PS4 than it is actually beneficial. Now, the reason I have or had ASP LMG is because I was doing the directive. Now, I was going for the God Saw, as you can see. Now, I didn't want to grind out the Godsaw. I didn't want to grind it out on the Heavy. 
I decided to try and grind it out on the engineer just because I play a lot of engineer so why not I didn't see it as a race I saw it more as a way to have fun because I'm not rushing to get the god saw at the time I was just playing the game and having fun and going for the god saw at the same time so people fall into this trap of using the god saw go uh, sorry go saw get it out get my words right sorry go saw I keep saying god saw and go saw go saw is this gun right here the NC6 go saw and the god saw is the um, is this weapon right here now that's obviously when you get your directive done it's a directive weapon just get that but what I'm saying is people get confused with LMG access you're still an engineer you're still going to die a ton most of the time if you want to kill stuff go for their heavy assault rifle access or just use um, carbines so I have to make this clear because people confused now heavy assault rifle access um, so I went for this on an engineer this is because some of the assault rifles are actually pretty good so if you click on some of the assault rifles like the GR22 for example now the GR22 has a good time to kill it's a really good gun to use and I mean obviously there's other guns you could use like the Carnage AR I find the Yummy is actually quite good it takes a lot of getting used to but it, I like it, I actually quite like it Vanquisher is a beautiful gun as well Reaper DMR I like the Reaper the Gorse, Gorse Rifle is, is, is beast, I love that the ones I don't tend to use are the Tross really, I don't tend to use the Carnage AR even though it's a really good gun I don't tend to use the Burst or the Gorse Rifle X but these guns are really good now using them on an engineer is good you really want good time to kill weapons on an engineer because you're going to die a ton now I'll talk about other things in a bit but generally stuff like using an LMG is bad it's a slow time to kill if you can't aim with the gore saw you're going to be at a loss so yeah um, so yeah just, tell, just putting that out there LMG is not good for beginners it's there nonetheless and feel free to use it I'd recommend the promise with the engineer because the promise is a really good gun really accurate and you'll get a, a ton of kills with it but again you're still going to die a ton assault rifle access if you're going to go down that route I would recommend a GR22 on an engineer GR22 on an engineer really strong really good because you want you want good time to kill weapons really the reason why I recommend the promise is because the promise is um, accurate using something like the gore saw can be really hard it takes a lot of getting used to gore saw is really strong if you can hit headshots if you struggle use the promise assault rifle access gr22 so emp grenade access now we didn't have i didn't have much um to go for really when i was going through these because a lot of the stuff i don't use like smg secondary um, sidearm primers i just don't use them so i decided to go for emp grenade access now these are good for like multiple things if you main harassers you could chuck them on a bunch of you could chuck the emp grenade on a bunch of uh, mines and it will destroy them you can chuck an emp grenade at, um, on a point and go in and you know everyone's shields will be down so i've had at, you know times when i've been with teammates and i've chucked an emp grenade on point and they've rushed in the problem with the emp grenade is that you end up hitting yourself more than you hit the enemy if you clip the wall it will set the emp grenade off and you'll end up emp grenade in your whole team if you chuck an emp grenade on point you'll end up hitting your own team sometimes it happens you'll end up knocking their shields down and they'll get killed now with that said i do use it and i enjoy it it's also good for taking out spawn beacons that's what i use it mainly for i will chuck a spawn if someone's got a spawn beacon on the roof i'll chuck an emp grenade and I'll destroy the spawn beacon. So shotgun secondary. Um, moving on. So shotgun secondary is probably the best thing you can have as an engineer. If you're an engineer main, having a shotgun secondary is really strong. So 
the piston, the claw, the bruiser, really strong choices. Um, I, I don't like the Baron really or any other, but I tend to go, now the bruiser is what I used at first. I used to use the bruiser a lot. I only tend to pull out my shotgun when I'm fighting heavy assaults. You have to have some sort of edge over heavy assaults. Heavy assaults are going to wreck you. Now, with the bruiser, I used to get a lot of one shots against heavy assaults. I would shoot them in the head and I would kill them straight out. The problem, the problem you have is that people will BM you for using shotguns. Now, I don't particularly pick engineer and run around with a shotgun all the time because it's not really my play style and it's not something I really want to get into. But I do have ASP because it's important that you stand your ground against heavies. Being able to stand your ground and hold your ground against heavy assaults is important. You know, you're going to get wrecked by most, if not all players on, on, you know, on the map, especially heavy assaults. You know, so you need to ha hold your own. So the way I see that is pulling out a shotgun sometimes. Normally I'll run into a point if there's a heavy, for example, um, the other day there was a shotgun heavy assault. I pulled out my shotgun, I killed him. I had um, a guy with heavy assault canis, I killed him with a shotgun. You, ha you have to, you, you can't stand there and fight them with the main weapon, you're gonna lose. You can't, you can't fight them with a carbine, you're gonna struggle. You can't fight them um, with an SMG, you're gonna lose. If you're really accurate, you might be able to get the lucky shot, but fighting people like Shotgun and, and Canis and people like that, you have you generally have to pull out a shotgun and just go at them. There's no other way around it. So yeah. So with that said, these are my choices for ASP. It's what I picked. You know, think about what you're gonna, you know, put into. You know, think about it in detail, have a look. It's, 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 um, you'll change probably a lot over time. You'll pick a few things to begin with and then you'll probably end up canceling um, your ASP points and resetting them and putting it all again. I want to get uh, anti-vehicle grenade access again. I think that would be useful. Other than that, I don't see it. I might take away assault rifle access or LMG access because I have the God, the God Sword now. So I don't really need to have LMG access, but. I'm probably going to stick with LMG access and try and get good with a gore saw. But yeah. So I hope this helped, guys. I hope this gives you an insight into ASP and what it is. If you're getting close to level 100, then smash it this weekend. Try and get ASP out. You know, it's a grind. The last couple of levels are a grind. You know, I went from ASP, I went to ASP 100 within like a week. And I grinded every day. Um, like I got level 100 I, I went from level 98 to 100 in a day it took me a long it took me from 6 in the morning till I think around 2 in the morning and I was on it most if not all day so yeah it's, it's a slog I had a lot of um, so I'll just show you this quick so if you go into my character you can equip equipment boost you can buy um you can buy things so let me just show you so here you've got you can buy things with um daybreak i've got what i've got experience boost that you get over the year just buy you get them for free sometimes i've got nanite boost 30 minutes etc but you really want the experience boost now obviously with membership and other things you get an experience boost if you have membership and it's towards the end of the month you get a membership only two times xp weekend so when i was doing it i had two times experience plus two times experience from the game because the game was giving me two times experience because it was a two times experience weekend for normal players that's not players with membership i had a membership so i was getting four times experience i had two equipment boosts so um, i had friends in my party that had all activated boosts. So I was using Medic for the whole day in a biolab most of the day. I think that particular day, I think Indar was bugged and it wasn't coming up with a continent alert. 
So I ended up staying for like nine hours on indoor before something actually happened where it, and then the next day I came on and it was indoor again because indoor had bugged. Indoor wasn't showing up. So for 12 hours, I was on indoor on Sunday. So on the first day I got from level 97 to 98 and then the day after I ended up getting two levels to ASP 100. Getting from, getting from level 100 to 125 in the same day, I also did that as well because that's really easy. It takes a what, like an hour to get 125 or 25, level 25 after 100. So yeah, I hope this uh, gave you an insight into ASP. It takes a lot to get there, but it is worth it. So yeah, get grinding guys and I'll see you soon. Take care.